very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Today, no war has been declared. And however fierce the struggle may be, it may never be declared in the traditional fashion. Our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. The survival of our friends is in danger. And yet no war has been declared. No borders have been crossed by marching troops. No missiles have been fired. If the press is awaiting a declaration of war, before it imposes the self-discipline of combat conditions, then I can only say that no war ever posed a greater threat to our security. If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. It requires a change in outlook, a change in tactics, a change in missions by the government, by the people, by every businessman or labor leader, and by every newspaper. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, Jeremiah 49, 10. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, his brethren, his neighbor, and he is not. Leave thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. Thus saith Yahweh, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink. Thus, <coughs> thus say the Creator, not that name, that name's a double. Drink of the cup, have surely drunk it. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. I have sworn by myself, saith Yahweh, that Basra says the creator shall become a desolation a reproach a waste and a curse and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste just want to make sure you know we serve the creator not that name he just said all names are devils don't fall for the hijack Today, people who are still actually anti-science, a whole movement called the anti-vaxxers, who refuse to acknowledge the evidence that vaccinations have eradicated smallpox, and who by their prejudices are actually endangering the very children they want to protect. And I totally reject this anti-scientific pessimism. I'm profoundly optimistic about the ability of new technology to serve as a liberator and to remake the world, remake the world, remake the world wondrously and benignly. Indeed, in countless respects, technology is already doing just that. Nanotechnology, I mentioned earlier, revolutionizing medicine, 
by designing robot robots a fraction of the size of a red blood cell capable of swimming through our bodies, dispensing medicine, and attacking malignant cells like some Star Wars armada. Neural interface technology. Neural interface technology is producing a new generation of cochlear implants, I think, of new tools that we acquired, but over which we, the human race, had the advantage which we controlled. And that is not necessarily the case in the digital age. You may keep your secrets from your friends, from your parents, your children, your doctor, even your personal trainer. But it takes real effort to conceal your thoughts from Google, from Google, from Google. And if that is true today, in future, there may be nowhere to hide. In future, there may be nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide. Smart cities will pollinate with sensors, all joined together by the Internet of Things. Bollards communing invisibly with lampposts. But this technology could also be used to keep every citizen under round-the-clock surveillance. First Timothy 6-2 O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Isaiah 63, 1. Well, there was none with me. For I would tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiments. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. We are living in the last moments of the last days. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim. My screen is showing some bizarre things, so I hope you guys are getting this. I can't even see if anyone's making comments. Um, I wanted to make sure you got this information. This has been breaking now. This is today. Off the coast of the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, not one, not two, not three, but four oil tankers, Singaporean, I know one at least was Singapore, oil tankers lost their ability to control their ships, to steer. Now, there's different thoughts on what's going on. We're not sure yet, but this is big. When we look at what's going on in the Middle East, this is really significant and I believe this is a harbinger. Just in my spirit, I feel this is a harbinger. And I was planning to do a video later today um, on a dream I had last night, so stay tuned for that. But I will tell you, this is very significant. The, U the United Kingdom warned that this could happen, to steer clear of that area. And many believe Iran has placed naval mines and that these tankers may have very well been impacted by these naval mines. Now, how it's going to come out, I'm not sure, but I wanted to make sure that we brought this breaking news. Stay tuned as to what's coming out. I will do my best to keep you abreast of what's going on. And I wanted to make sure I am in between hospital visits right now. But I want to say this to everyone. Believe on the Lord Jesus. I've done a video, oh, Faith oh. Plus Nothing. That's part of the problem. They believe in that lie. And Mr. J not going to save you when everything hit the fan real soon. That's going to open up to you. You'll have the key. You can open the door. But if you're, unva if you're vaccinated, all that's going to open up to you. You'll have the key. You can open the door. But if you're unvaccinated, unfortunately, you will not be able to participate in many things. That's the point we're trying to get across. It's time for people to see vaccination as literally necessary to living a good and full and healthy life. The key to NYC pass will be a first in the nation approach. It will require vaccination for workers and customers 
in indoor dining, in indoor fitness facilities, indoor entertainment facilities. This is going to be a requirement. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. In, right? Instead of locking you up, you're locked in. You're already in the cell. You live in the cell. Sure, it's, it's better than being in an actual prison. I'm sure. Never been in one, but I'm sure it's better. Because at least you can roam freely in your home and you have, you know, your pets or your family members. Sure. But as a society, this is the time now to push back. You know why? Because this is sloppy. This is poorly executed. And while it's sad that the people who have gotten the jab are turning on the people who don't instead of saying, well, we have it, we should be protected. Why is Big Brother not giving us something that'll protect us since we're taking it? We wouldn't have to worry about any of this crap. And instead they still listen to what Big Brother says, take the spoon that's being given, shove it down their throats and do as they're told. Because in reality, if I was one of these dummies who went and got it, I would be saying, well, come out with a better one then. If we're, we believe in science, come out with a better one that protects us. You have trillions of dollars that you take from all of us every year and do nothing with it, right? They pretty much just set it on fire. It's the whole point of the system. This is not even make, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway, do something with it. But instead what they're doing is they're shutting people out. But this is a huge mistake. This is actually something that's good for people on our side. Because I'll tell you right now, people are, you know, we live in a world where everyone is kind of fatigued, worn out, worn down. Obviously, I'm somebody who gets worn down a lot from all this stuff because it's draining, always looking at the negative and the negative. You have to have a, a really strong spine to be able to do that all the time. But it can even wear down the strong. But they're do the jab. The, the proof of them taking the jab you know, people want to say if it's a mark or not. Well, anyone who went and got it, their minds are fully controlled for the most part by these people because they just believed in a, whole, a total facade. But on the other side of this, we have angry people who were fatigued and worn out, but are starting to get pissed. And that's a good thing. Now, when you talk about rising up and doing something about it, we're not talking about violent uprising. We're talking about shutting it off. That's the thing that needs to be done. See, this is the problem with what they've created with Q is a scapegoat for them to say that anybody who doesn't participate in their government is some type of militia or doing something violent or extremism. No. With a breaking news alert. That breaking news from the Pentagon. It is currently on lockdown after multiple gunshots were fired near a platform by the facility's metro station. According to two people familiar with the shooting, at least one person was down. Their condition isn't known. An Associated Press reporter near the building heard multiple gunshots. The information is preliminary and we are continuing to monitor it and we'll let you know as we learn more about our channel. You can follow our independent comments on the latest news. The progress of the Taliban, which has been accelerating with the withdrawal of the USA in Afghanistan, cannot be stopped. In the last week, when the conflicts intensified, Taliban terrorists began to seize the capitals of the provinces. The Taliban had entered three major cities over the weekend. On Monday, August 2nd, the Taliban moved the conflict to Helmand, the capital of the city of Lakshar Gah. Taliban militants focusing on strategic areas have also been confirmed to have seized a TV station in Helmand. The city is now in danger of falling under the control of the Taliban. This incredible advance of the Taliban forced the United States to take action. Today, the U.S. carried out several airstrikes on the Taliban militants. It is also reported that the U.S. airstrikes have continued for 72 hours. <coughs> U.S. officials also confirmed that airstrikes in Afghanistan were active again. In this case, the attack of the Taliban militants on Kandahar Air Base, which we mentioned to you before, must have worried the U.S. administration. Forcing U.S. troops to launch such an airstrike in the final phase of the withdrawal may not be considered a successful outcome for the U.S. The main purpose of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan was to strengthen its hand against China and Russia. The military formation of the USA in Afghanistan and the fight against the Taliban prevented them and weakened the USA against China and Russia. With the US withdrawal from Afghanistan under President Biden, China and Russia were alarmed. 
China has insisted on supporting the Taliban militants and Russia, like the United States, supports the Afghan government. In this case, President Biden could have watched a Russia-China conflict that may occur in Afghanistan, leaning on his seat. However, now we are faced with a U.S. forced to take action against the aggressive advance of the Taliban, without Afghanistan, leaning on his seat. However, now we are faced with a U.S. forced to take action against the aggressive advance of the Taliban, without being able to see the moves of Russia and China.